much for which to thank Belgium. There are Belgian chocolates, Belgian waffles, and the attractive and talented performer who is our guest today. She's Monique Van Voren. In addition to speaking with the star, we'll be talking about them and other celestial matters. Also with us is the noted astrologer John Stevens, who recently authored The Astrology Diet. And now, here's your host and man of the half hour, Skippy Lowe. Monique Van Voren, good God. <laughs> A lady never leaves the house without gloves. I mean, you know. Well, in New York, I never do. Well, that's where you live, in Manhattan. Yes, uh-huh. But even if you live in Chicago, Monique, or Paris, Monique never leaves. That is your brought up. I mean, well, hats or gloves or... Nowadays, people just wear jeans. Well, it all depends where you live. I think that you have a different lifestyle out here in California where it is absolutely uh, unheard of to see people walking around with gloves. But in New York, I think people do wear hats and have gloves. And I have, uh, I have to be very careful about the sun because I'm very fair uh -huh. and I burn very easily. And uh, I have nice hands and I don't want to have them well, ruined by the sun either. Okay, but let's, let's get back. Monique, Chet Setter. I mean, you're, you're with the Chet Setters. Monique, you were in movies, and you did over 50 movies, shows, yes, and the theater. Yes, a lot of shows, but, but I'm mainly a writer now. I wrote a very successful novel called Night Sanctuary, uh -huh. which was in hardcover by uh, Simon and & Schuster, uh -huh. and uh, is in paperback by New American Library. It was translated in 10 languages, and uh, Preston Fisher of Republic Pictures, who did uh, the two Mrs. Glenville, Lace 1 and Lace 2, is doing a mini-series of it. Uh -huh. So or I'm not just in the jet set, uh, I must be doing something else. I'm obviously working very hard. But you also write for a lot of magazines. Yes, you I know, do. The Andy Warhol interview. Yes. Why does all the big jet setters do get into that, like Miss Skitts? Cornelia's mother, she writes too. Yes, uh, because I think that uh, right now, I think there's a great emphasis on people who do something mm -hmm. rather than people who just inherited something. Right, right. And even the people who have inherited money or people who have a lot of money like Carolyn Herrera or Zizi Guest and whatnot, they still want to be part of the people who are the doers mm -hmm. of the world. They, they participate in doing uh -huh. something and creating uh -huh. something. Yeah, but you're the last of the Rockefellers, the B.B. Rockefeller. Tell me about B.B. Rockefeller. Oh, my Come God. The, uh, you I know, mean, I really don't wish to talk about... Uh, no? No. Oh, okay. okay. No. Dorothy Kilgallen. Dorothy Kilgallen was a fabulous person. She was a, a friend of mine. She was good to me. Uh, a lot of people didn't like her. Um, but, you know, you can only judge people in retrospect as to how they are towards you. And uh -huh. that was my feeling towards Dorothy, who met an untimely death, I think, and that was very unfortunate. And But I did like her a lot. Copa days. Ah, those were the days, weren't they? The, well... The Copa days, Monique Van Boren. No, the Copa days I didn't know. That was before my time. It was? It really was, yes. The Copa Society days came uh, before my time. Uh -huh. uh, the store club was before my time. That was before my time. I see. Okay, married to a count. German count? I was never married to a count. Now, um, why did that word get out? They said, Monique was well, married to a German count. That's no, the rumor. Not at no? all. Okay. Straighten me out. Just it. like, I don't know why it came like they, I was Miss Belgium. I was never Miss anything. You weren't Miss Belgium either. No, no. I never entered any contest. How could I win anything or lose anything? You know, that way you never win, you never lose. You came to America when you were what? Oh, About, seven. I was not quite 17. I came as an exchange student and went to New York University and majored in philosophy. Philosophy. Which is a far cry from show business, which uh -huh. I entered um, accidentally. And I thought it was going to be uh, temporarily and what it was, temp temp was, was supposed to be mm -hmm. temporarily became a way of life. And then I stopped. I, I wanted to write a novel. How many people do you know that tell you, well, well I'm going to write a novel, but I'm going to write it when I'm um, older, when I'm financially secure, uh -huh. when I have time? Uh, I knew these things were never going to happen, the old part, yes. But uh, I knew that if I wanted to write a novel, I had to do it. So I cut the umbilical cord at the time with mm -hmm. show business and went and sat down for three years and wrote a novel. I'm in the midst of finishing my second one. You grew up in a convent? Yes. In Belgium? Very, very strictly, yes. From a very wealthy Belgian family? Well-to-do family. Well-to-do family. Mm -hmm. Your father was a very 
big man in, in the, the arts. Yes. In the arts. Yes. I see. Mm -hmm. Monique, first film. What was it? Oh, it Come was uh, Vittorio De Sita. Tomorrow is too late. Oh. What kind of man was he? He discovered you, I understand. Yes, uh, he was a fantastic man, and I played a schoolgirl in a film called Tomorrow is Too Late, and um, uh, I never thought I would enter show business, but one thing led to another, then I became a showgirl in uh, John Murray Anderson's Almanac, and uh -huh. then I did uh, all kinds of films. And I did Richard films Bardot, in Europe. Tell I me. know her very well. I know. Tell me about her. Well, she lived in, when I met her, she was living in Saint-Tropez, and she was married to Vadim, which draws back quite many years. Uh -huh. She's a... It's amazing that she loved animals so much. She, she always did. Did she always did many things? Al always did, but she gave up her son when he was born to her husband. She did not want to, mo to be a mother. Why is that? I don't know. I don't understand. But you're a mother. Oh, yes. You're a mother of one child or two? Yes, one child. One child. Yeah. His name is Eric Purcell? Yes. And uh, your husband was a, a theatrical agent in New York City. Yes. Mm -hmm. His name one of was my husband. One, one of the. How many times Monique Van Voren's been married? Oh my goodness, four times. But you know, it's not, not bad. Not bad. I mean, well, listen, that could have been ten. Huh? Could have been ten. Ten. I could have been married ten times. Well, to be four husbands, Monique, and one child. Yes. And uh, but. Who are some of the famous husbands? Yeah. Well, I don't think that, uh, I think everyone in their own right was famous. I married uh, my last husband, who certainly is a famous man. He is a theatrical agent who represents most of the country western stars. stars. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. John Cash, John, uh, Eddie Arnold, most of the big ones. You live in New York? I live in New York. I live right in the center of Manhattan where all the action is. And I go on where all the action is. So yes. that means Monique Van Boren likes action. I sure right? do, absolutely. I like it. I like to go out. I like to be invited. I like to be, have friends. I like uh -huh. to walk. I like to. Uh -huh. uh, so California doesn't mm, have lick windows like Sobe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Monique, California doesn't have that stuff. That's why I stay about it's a week. Just about a week. It doesn't have the style here. It just doesn't have the style. Well, it has its own style. It's a different style. It is not my style at this time of my life, uh -huh. but uh, it has a great style. Jacqueline on asses. Yeah, those are your friends. You yes. Know? Andy Warhol. Yes, Andy was a great friend of uh -huh. mine, and it was Tell me such about Andy. a tragedy. Tell me about it. I, I loved did a him. film I Andy well called Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. You did. And I was one of the very first to be an editor of Interview Magazine. Uh -huh. And I did the first interviews that uh, Interview Magazine did, and I continued to write for them. Uh -huh. um, Andy was, a, was an absolute creation because Andy was uh, so talked about for not ever saying anything, actually. Did he say a word? Gosh, no, but uh, uh, he was... Uh, he said everybody in the world is going to be famous for 15 minutes, and he happened to be famous for the past 20 years, uh -huh. I think. But Andy had his own courage, yes. And he said, please pass the salt very quietly. Always. He was a very gentle and a very uh, shy person and very religious because I have a church right across the street from where I live in New York on 66th Street and uh, Andy lived right next door to me and I always watched him going to church almost daily. Daily? Mm -hmm. He was very religious and yet a lot of people around him uh, were part of that sort of underground crowd of uh -huh. the 70s. and. Uh, died very tragically with drugs and this mm -hmm. and that, and he never used any of it. What made that crowd go for Andy Warhol? Because he was the genius of his time. I think long after we are all gone, the world will still talk about Andy Warhol, and it is like living in the days of a Picasso or mm -hmm. be part of his entourage. I think that Andy Warhol opened himself a lot to uh, people that he found uh, interesting, amusing, doers. Um, but no, he was attracted to wealth, he Andy. Was. Yes, he was very attracted and very fascinated by inherited wealth. Ah, uh, old money. Old money. I see. Tell me something. What sign was Andy Warhol? 
What sign? Do you remember his sign? I don't Mr. remember his you sign. No. Because there's a gentleman next to you. His name is John Stevens, and he is an astrologer, and I just had to bring him on the show with okay. you, Monique, <laughs> because I, Monique Van Boren is, uh, Mink, I like, I'd like you to meet John Stevens well, next to you. He's a charming I, we had the Hello, John. How are you? Hi, Hi. Tell me about your astrology diet. Yes. What is that all about? Well, astrology diet is, as the name implies, it's all about food. Right. But it's about... Uh, it's a personalized approach to dieting. Right. Because I believe that if we can accept that people have different personalities right. because of what time of year they're born, and not everybody accepts that, but uh, many, many millions of people do accept that. Right. And I believe that if we accept that, then we must also accept that people have individual biological differences. And of course, we know that everyone does. Some people can eat all they want, mm -hmm. never seem to gain any weight, and others, uh, they just think about the food and already the calorie counter is starting right. to go, you see. So Isn't it also genetic? Well, That's genetic, but genetic shows up in the chart also. You see. <laughs> so it tells you what you should eat and shouldn't eat. Is that it? Is that what you're Yes, there are, there are basic tendencies for each sun sign that you want to gravitate toward right. more. Uh, for instance, the fire signs tend to need more protein. Right. The water signs tend to need more fruits and vegetables uh -huh. and tend to do better with them. And the whole rationale behind it yes. is, is that if you eat the foods that relate to your sun sign, uh -huh. then you will actually feel full quicker because uh -huh. those foods tend to be more satisfying. For your sign. And so that you're not eating a lot of empty calories uh -huh. mm. and you're feeling full sooner, it, it's, a, it's a tremendous rationale and it actually works. Makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yes, it does. <laughs> what, what's your sign, darling? I'm Aries. You're Aries. Aries. That's a nice sign, isn't it? Well, they say that. that. Is that your well, sign? What's your it's sign? It's a sign? difficult sign. Is it? <laughs> is it Taurus? No, no, no. Aries is a difficult sign, but you said that you have the Scorpio ascendant. Yes. You see, now that's what makes you, you makes you a very intense personality because whenever you get the Aries Scorpio combination, uh -huh. you have the power of Aries and then the intensity of Scorpio, you see, you're either hot or cold, you're one way or the other, yes. and you, you, when you, uh, you know, you, you're like a, a bundle of dynamite, you see, <laughs> and so, uh, but when it comes to dieting, you see, you're, you could also be very extreme uh -huh. in your tastes or in the, t in the ways that you eat. Uh -huh. One day you could be total abstain from food and then the other day eat some kind of exotic or unusual food and eat a lot of it, you see. Well, I so hate to say <laughs> this, but I, I don't even, I, I don't diet, I don't gain weight. Well, so it doesn't diet at all? You keep, you just, just... Well, it's hmm. just that I've had the habits well, of eat. a lifetime. <laughs> I've never eaten between meals. Uh -huh. I've never drank milk. I, um, I don't drink. Uh -huh. Alcohol. Uh, ah, that's the main thing, isn't it, John? Well, I mean, that's drinking, a big part that's of it. A big part that's of it. a big helps, part of it, right? yeah. What's the day like for Monique Van Voren? What time of the day does Monique Van Voren get up in, in New York? Oh, in New York it all depends, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Ah, oh, come on, Monique. You're sitting oh. there telling me you get up at 7.30 in Manhattan? It all mm -hmm. depends, yes. I really? go to work at from 9 to 2, yes. I really? make it, I try to. I would to think you would sleep until... Sometimes I, I sleep until 12 or 1 o'clock, yes. it all depends, but I do have a routine of going to work on my computer every day from 9 to 2, uh -huh. so I make myself get up, so. and regardless of, uh, I'm like Cinderella, you know, after past 12 <laughs> midnight or 1 o'clock, I uh -huh. no longer am the girl I used to be in. Uh, flocking around clubs and whatnot. First of all, there are no. You think Manhattan is what it was in the 70s? It it really is, and there are no places to go. Oh come on, Monique. There are. There. There's a lot of theater that we are so. Uh, but so great places for, to go. A lot of society society for the jet setters, the society people. Well, is that what you you're people to entertain now? at yeah. home yeah. mainly, or uh -huh. in two or three restaurants. You know, you you have to think that in New York we have a population of what 12 million, maybe right. 2,000 people a night go out. Uh -huh. John yes. Stevens. Susan Strasberg called me and yes. says, good God, this Jan Stevens is just brilliant. Skippy, you've got to get him on the show. And I called you and I said, I'd love to have you on the show. Yes. Well, Susan. Now, go ahead. She yeah, is yeah. an astrologer, too. Oh, Susan? yeah. She's quite a student Susan. of astrology. Right. She knows her stuff. I, I she's a Gemini like a I Gemini, am. A Gemini, yes, yes. Tell me what's happening. And she loves New York, too, you see, because New York is more of the Gemini vibration. Ah, that's me. You see, L.A. is more of the Leo vibration. You know, the, the, it's the world stage, really. LA, the world LA? stage, you know, Leo. Yeah, sure. The world stage. What do you actually mean by that? All our films are exported from Hollywood. Oh, okay. You okay. see? I so, see. Uh, 
you know, it's the center of the whole film industry. But in New York, there's a lot of creativity, which Gemini's are very right. creative and full of ideas and full of uh, the networking and the communication. And this is where all of this stuff comes out of New York. Uh -huh. All of the greatest inventions of the world, if you think about it, came from the eastern uh, part of the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the telephone, the telegraph, and well, uh, even TV. I mean, all of it right. came from, uh, and that's the very creative aspect of Gemini. See, uh -huh. see, so that's why you relate very well to New York, Susan. Mm -hmm. Also, so and you. I love New York. Yes. Now, the food. What should what should I eat not to gain weight? What's my? I'm a Gemini. Signs, Gemini, Gemini, well, Gemini. a lot of Geminis have a sweet tooth. And that can get to be a problem. True. <laughs> True. Really? Uh, you have? Yeah, kind <laughs> of. Well, yeah. I do like sweets. Uh -huh. You're yeah. right. Excellent. And, <laughs> and, you know, for a lot of Geminis, it's not bad to eat sugar, but uh -huh. you want to get more natural forms of sugar, such as in honey okay. or in fructose or in fruits uh, themselves. Right. How you interesting. See? Yeah. Uh, because with Geminis, they. It, uh, eating a lot of sugar doesn't put weight on them that much unless you really overdo it. Uh -huh. Because what it, for Geminis, it tends to speed them up. The mind becomes more active, right. they move I a little do. faster, and they talk faster. So you, you don't know so which one you're talking to. <laughs> That's right. I'm a triple Gemini. <laughs> right. yeah. and You've I got walk. three personalities. <laughs> you know, John, I walk a lot. I love to walk. That's why yes. I like How do you walk in the I walk, darling. I put my little sneakers on and I just walk the streets. And mm -hmm. That's it. Ignore everybody. What's interesting about your chart, now you've seen, you gave me your information information before uh -huh. the show, and I drew up the chart for you, yes. you've got about six planets in the 12th house. Uh -huh. And the 12th house is the house that is associated with films, uh -huh. with illusion, and with all the, the glitz and the glamour of Hollywood. So what could be more appropriate than what you're doing, you see? I see. I <laughs> see? New age <laughs> life. What is that all about? The new age life. I'd like to know about this well, magazine. Naturally, uh, the New Age Life magazine covers astrology, but right. it also covers all aspects of metaphysics. Uh -huh. And this is the thing that is uh, becoming of age, you know, with this thing with Nancy Reagan. Uh, in fact, there's a piece in the magazine on yeah. page 25 where we talk, almost have photographic proof of how uh -huh. this thing with Nancy goes all the way back to her Hollywood years. With, with Carol Ryder. Right. And right. Carol Ryder was. We just uh, lost him. Yes. Oh, yes. Man. He yes. was a wonderful man. Yes. Uh, he was my teacher. I know <laughs> he was. Is that yes. Right? yes, he was yes. your teacher. Oh. Yes. Tell me something, John. Uh, um, Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Tell me about Nostradamus. Well, Nostradamus. Is that true or coming true, or what do you think? Well, I think that was a lot of hype over a. How do we know? Hype. How do we know there was ever a Nostradamus? Oh, mm -hmm. there was an Nostradamus. There was. Oh, you medieval believe? astrologer. He was born in uh, 1503. Okay. <laughs> and um, he uh, was astrologer to a court astrologer to uh, Catherine de Medici. Yeah. Uh, very famous in his own day, but uh, famous more among the elite because the common people uh, be, were very superstitious, uh -huh. and they thought he they accused him of witchcraft. Uh -huh. He for a great while he was very unpopular, uh -huh. but it's only because that his predictions and uh -huh. his gift of prophecy was so accurate yes. that it frightened many people. In fact, in an epistle to King Henry the uh Second, -huh. it's a, a very famous letter that he wrote. He said. If I could assign an exact time and a date to every one of my quatrains, it could have been done. I see. I see. But it would not have been agreeable to all for me to do it. Uh -huh. See, because uh, he he recognized even with what he gave in his quatrains, which mm -hmm. are very obtuse, kind of a poetic right. verse. Right. You know, that even uh, people were able to extract meanings uh -huh. from that and uh, have verification that those prophecies were correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, that they became frightened. So imagine if he gave the exact date and place yes. of every prediction, I see. how much pandemonium, mm -hmm. you see. Mm. I'm going to ask you, John, Mrs. Reagan, has she opened doors for astrologers like you? She's got to. You must, your phone must be ringing like <laughs> crazy right now. Well, it, has, you, it has, has, in general, it has created more interest and more acceptance of it. Acceptance? Yeah, I, I just did a showcase over at Sportsman's Lodge for people to uh, uh, introduce them to what astrology is all about. Uh -huh. And they are very receptive uh, as a result of this. In fact, right. they even mentioned that. You know, uh -huh. now we've all got to get our charts done now that Nancy's doing it. Yes, yes. That's <laughs> the end thing right yeah. now. Is it in oh, New York? Yes. Is that what's happening in Manhattan, too? Well, well I think that in New York, uh, the circle of people that I have known, that everybody's always, always been interested in their astrology. Yeah, but it's Absolutely. opening doors for other people. It has opened doors. Yes. Absolutely. And this is destined for the age of Aquarius, where this will become more 
more and more accepted on a mass scale because uh -huh. uh, Aquarius is the uh, vibration of astrology. It deals with metaphysics, higher uh -huh. vibrational uh -huh. things. Uh -huh. And this is all of what's coming of age. The only thing is okay. that we have to move in it responsibly. I see. And we have to use these occult sciences, as we call them, in a, in a spiritual way, I believe, uh -huh. in order for them to be accurate and effective and helpful. John hmm. Stevens, where are you from? You sound very spiritual, doesn't he? Yes, unique. very. Very spiritual, a very nice young man. Where are you from, John? Well, I'm from New York, and you know, uh -huh. you mentioned that you were raised in, in uh, the convent. Yes. And uh -huh. for years I was in the monastery for ah. the Catholic priesthood. So that, See. you know, that religious sentiment is very strong in me. Yes. But I don't believe if someone is religious that that means that necessarily uh, spiritual. Right, right. Because I believe they're two different things. Religion is following the rules of a religion, perhaps. But yes. spiritual is establishing that commu communication with God. Yes. And that's, I think, really... And that's even more so destined for the age of Aquarius. Individual communion with God. We're falling away from so much of the traditional religions and so much of the bureaucracy of it all mm -hmm. and coming more into that individual understanding which will get stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Monique, <laughs> Andy Warhol, what did he leave you? Did he, he must have... Uh, well, like Andy Warhol, what left, left me is that every Christmas for the past 15 years, Andy Warhol gave me a fabulous cell screen and they are lining up my apartment and they are worth now a fortune. Uh -huh. And he gave that to many of his friends. You remember a girl who was in the uh, in this first, very first entourage and called Viva. Viva, of course. And well, Viva, he yes. painted for her a uh -huh. painting that must be the size of this wall, wall. Uh -huh. which they have offered her two million dollars for. Did they really? And he did it just as a. Do you know what Andy uh, gave me? He gave me a piggy jar. I got a piggy thing from him. We went shopping in the village. Yes. And he never used to look at his things. He just buy it and just put it away. Just put them away. Just the way you believe yes. with the auction that brought in. You know what he did? He shipped it for my birthday on June 6th in 1970. I think it was 70 or 71. And he put a little card in. I have it. It's a piggy jar. It is a Dutch boy. It, it's just gorgeous. It is just beautiful. I've had it for all these years. Now I understand it's worth a lot of money. Oh, yes. I, I wouldn't give up. You know, I, I was talking to Cornelia Guest, and she says, keep it. <laughs> Absolutely. You're very good friends with Cornelia. Tell me about Cornelia. Uh, she's such a nice lady. Well, Cornelia is like just her. a very uh, uh, glamorous, uh, exciting girl who uh -huh. inherited a lot of money and uh -huh. feels that she wants to do something by herself. She's she has been right. trying for a long time to uh -huh. break into films and to be in the acting world right. and the be some someone uh -huh. just uh -huh. on her own yeah. and uh, for that reason she moved from New, from New York to California yeah. because she thought uh, the entries would be better for her out uh -huh. here than they are in New York as far as films are concerned I met her with Jacqueline Stallone and uh, they are yeah. very good buddies yes They're real good she loves Jacqueline very very much she went with Sylvester for yes, a while I know that and uh, but uh, she's Jack they came to my birthday party well, I heard you had a birthday party I the other night. I was at Carlson and Charlie's, had a marvelous birthday there. Jan, you weren't around. Where I couldn't get a hold of you or something. But anyway, I it was, heard it was it wonderful. Was, it was a great birthday party. Well, happy birthday. Thank you, darling. Relatedly. Yes. What's happening with uh, Triple Gemini? You were telling me before. Yes. You said you have a chart for me, too. You know, I just wonder if there's some things happening around you about making a move. Yeah. I, I, I really love it. Is I this in the talking stage at this point? I'm going to be changing, yes. I might yeah. be working with Miss Stallone. We, yeah, because there are some big changes. But don't be, uh, d don't be disappointed if some of these are false starts. You think something's going to happen. And, but I predict that by the middle of 89, you're actually going to be doing something on a much larger scale, a much really? broader scale. Oh, nice. And that's when it actually is going to start. So don't be disappointed. This John, is all coming I don't about. take life <laughs> serious. I take it from <laughs> moment to moment, just yes. now. Right yes. now is the most important thing for me. I'm looking at you two wonderful <laughs> people. That's all I have. Yes. This is what I have. You two, right mm -hmm. now. I don't take what's <laughs> going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's the only... How do you take life, Monique? Is that... Oh, is I that am... Serious? Uh, I don't take it serious. Real serious, like I, I used just, to. Well, uh, I used to not take it seriously. I'm taking it far more seriously right now you than I used to. Yes, I'm uh, far more... Yes, I'm, uh, I've changed a great deal. But like, what do you mean you've changed a great deal? I mean, looking well, back, I mean, looking back, I looking used back to over your think, life. Oh, I used to just uh, take off a foreign country on the spur of the moment. Uh -huh. I'm far more responsible uh, than I used to be. Uh, I am. Uh, 
much more uh, dedicated to what I'm doing, mm -hmm. uh, which is writing right now, than I used to be. So you um, to write. Um, you designed a write, writer? Uh, That's what I want to do. I want to yeah. write. I you must write have it. an interesting chart. You probably have a lot of third house things, you see. But you're probably a good writer. I want to write. all that Gemini. I want to write. Because Gemini is the sign of the writer. I'm going to do my story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you have to do but it. I am. But I can right. imagine that with your style of writing, you just, you just cut them to the quick. I mean, you don't make any bones about it. You just get right to the To the point. To the point. Yes. Right yes. to the point. Very direct. I see. Aries Scorpio, naturally. You, see. <laughs> you married John? Yes. Yes. yes you live course. in California or back east? I live in California. And and I've this been book, out here where do people get years. this book? This is a wonderful book. Where do we go? Well, this book? it's available nationwide. Uh -huh. uh, you can get it at B. Dalton, most anywhere, uh -huh. uh, um, and in a lot of metaphysical bookstores. I think this is a great Carol writer. To, what a wonderful yes. man. Yes. Sidney Omar, all these wonderful people. <laughs> you got all these wonderful quotes in the back here, and Susan Strasberg, what a great lady she is. Yes. She's yes, into uh, astrology. And spiritual as well, and very much interested in all these metaphysical studies. You use that word spiritual. <laughs> to be an astrologer, you've got to have a spiritual in inner. Is that... Is that I think, I think to be a good one, you have to. Yeah. Uh, now, this is where I separate myself from what I call the occultists. Yes. Because the occultists are just there for the science itself. Yes. Right. And they claim yes. the power for themselves. Uh -huh. But I believe that in any of these pursuits, which I think properly must be called spiritual uh -huh. pursuits, uh, that uh, you must draw on the power of God. And uh -huh. it, it is the power of his power uh -huh. that this stuff is able to work and you're yes. able to predict, I, I, which Nostradamus very, very much believed right. himself. Right. And, you know. <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor, Ash Wednesday. And what a wonderful movie. Well, I mean, tell me about that. Film. Well, I was very fortunate to be in that film because Dominique Dunn, who uh, is, to me, is such a wonderful writer, just has a new book out called The... Uh, um, and he has a book. I'm going to interview him. Oh, wh yes. what is the name of that? I can't remember. The it's, it's People out. Like Us. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Wonderful. I yeah. recommend it to anybody yes. to read. It's wonderful. But Dominique Dunn was the producer of the film, and Elizabeth Taylor was then still uh, patching up things with Richard Burton, and we were making the film in Venice. Uh -huh. In, uh, just outside of Venice and she was fighting with him so many times and they were drinking a lot and all that. My part, which was supposed to be something like five days, wound up to be three weeks, so I was okay. ecstatic over it. Was it summertime and or wintertime? It, when you it did? was uh, uh, summertime. It was warm. Mm, okay. It was warm. And she's an absolutely fantastic lady, such a generous person, warm, wonderful, uh, fun to be with, and we've, we have remained very good friends. Monique Van Boren. Looking back over your life, do you have any regrets at all? Or would you like to do something that you'd left out in your life? Oh, my dear, dear one, it would take forever to tell you what I miss and what I should have done and what I didn't do and what I do regret. Main thing what I regret is that I didn't do more of what I did. Uh, I don't regret the things that I did. I regret sometimes that I didn't do enough of them, that's all. You had a lot of men in your life. No, not really. Not people think though. So. People think so because, because they, they think assume because they see you with so and so and they assume see uh -huh. you with so and so, and if you are in the public eye, that you. Necessarily